Hello, today I will discuss about the pathophysiology of priapism. What is priapism? Priapism is the prolonged status of erection of penis. Prolonged erection of penis for four hours or more. Okay, we got the prior pigeon. How can I define it? Def definition that is the persistent persistent usually painful erection of penis erection of penis associated or unassociated with unassociated with sexual stimulus okay so it may happen to any age from newborn to the old individual in the younger age group okay so from 0 to 20 years, one group, another group is 20 to 60 years, okay, 0 to 20 years, it is usually associated with some disease condition, like that of sickle cell anemia, leukemia, like that, sickle cell anemia or leukemia. 20 to 60 year, it is associated with some type of drug, okay. So, these are the peaks. So, anyone from the newborn to the old days may have persistent erection of penis, may be associated or unassociated with sexual stimulus and it is often painful condition, it is painful. Or usually painful. So we got the prior pigeon and age distribution. Now types of prior pigeon. Okay, two common type we can say one is the is the low flow low flow low flow venu occlusive type another one is high flow high flow prior pigeon high flow prior pigeon okay we have two type one is low flow this is very common this is most common And it may last maybe four four hours, maybe even days. Okay, high flow. It may be recurrent. It may happen recurrently. Okay, maybe stuttering condition, maybe self remitting condition, self limiting condition is possible in high flow prior pigeon. Okay, we call the type of the. Prior pigeon. So, what are the etiology of prior pigeon? Etiology that means causes of prior pigeon. It may be idiopathy. Idiopathy. We don't know the cause. It may be may happen after sexual activity. Okay. We have this. We may call it primary. 
try out p it may be secondary secondary prior pigeon we have some calls very important is the sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia on the important cause and it is found that in a homozygous person with sickle cell anemia lifetime chance of getting prior pigeon is about 42 percent okay so sickle cell anemia it may be associated with leukemia may be associated with diabetes mellitus okay so it may be associated with tumor or malignancy tumor or malignancy of the rectum or the penile area maybe a complication of prostate cancer okay may be associated with spinal cord injury or injury or perineal injury perineal injury okay it may be caused by some medication medications or like that or antidepressant drug like trazodone antidepressant drug antipsychotic drug psychotic drugs okay that may be associated with that of priapism and Another group of medication, these are the phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor, phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, like that of the Viagra, Cialis, like that, or Levitra, Viagra, Cialis. Leaf it drug. Okay, this drug may cause prior pigeon. Okay, we got that. So it may be some type of injection in the penis, like that of papaverin, to to manage erectile dysfunction that may lead to prior pigeon. Okay, so it may be associated with substance abuse, like that of cocaine okay even it may be associated with that of the black widow spider bite black widow spider bite okay. or may be associated with scorpion sting scorpion sting so there are many causes of priapism or persistent erection of penis. It may be idiopathic, we don't, may not know the cause. Okay, it may be idiopathic, primary type, secondary type. There are many causes of priapism. So what is the exact pathophysiology? If you go to the exact pathophysiology, if you go to the pathophysiology, what happened in low flow type? Low flow type, what happened? There will be prolonged erection. There will be prolonged erection. That will lead to leads to edema, thrombosis, stasis, 
of the of the cavernous trabecula cavernous trabecula okay prolonged erection leads to edema of cavernous trabecula resulting in sequence of stasis we get stasis thrombosis venous occlusion that may lead to fibrosis and scar formation scarring of the corpus cavernosa or corpora cavernosa we have two corpora cavernosa one corpus spongiosum in case of priapism to corpora I mean to corpus cavernosum that is the corpora cavernosa are affected corpus spongiosum or the glans penis is usually not affected okay scarring of the penile okay we can say scarring of the corpora cavernosa that may lead to importance eventually and sexual dysfunction if it is more than 16 17 hours of priapism that may happen okay so that is the low flow type of low flow type of venu occlusive priapism another one is high flow type this is actually less common and it may be recurrent that causes cavernous artery rupture there is high flow cavernous artery rupture leading to arterial cavernous fistula leading to arterio cavernous fistula fistula okay so this is the pathophysiology of priapism so we got the cause we got the pathophysiology diagnosis by physical examination getting the history getting the blood from the patient ultrasonography to find out any type of tumor around the perineum or any type of trauma there okay then it is an emergency you must remember that the priapism is a medical emergency medical emergency so the patient should be should go to the emergency department as soon as possible before going there there may be some ice pack there may be some cold enema hot enema there may be anticholinergic drug sedative drug may be given but it should be managed by a urosurgeon or urologist it may need to take out blood from the shaft of the penis by puncturing it it may need to do some type of shunting surgery by the urosurgeon so that's all about the priapism so if you like my video please support my channel please subscribe me share the information with your friend if you have any question please feel free to ask me have a nice day bye now